Thanks for joining us for this week's installment of the Deck Lunch series. Uh, this week, we are, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, some gentlemen from Perseido. They're a company that's been doing some work with Humana for about a year, uh, and they're just going to talk just a bit about how they've been working with Humana and the various services that they offer. So without further ado, Brian Cox. Um, go through some quick introductions, give you an overview about the value that we provide, and ultimately walking into how do we do what we do, and uh, the results that Humana has seen from us, and we'll talk about this very shortly about how we potentially work together. If there's ever a project or a new thing that you might want to use us on. So really quick, uh, my name's Ryan Cox, uh, I am the Director of Customer Success uh, at Persado, so I am uh, I lead for the relationship with Humana, and I also lead our engagements with the rest of our uh, insurance clientele. So I'm based in Chicago, uh, here regularly. Our office is just a few streets down from uh, you guys on Adams in Chicago, so I see that uh, team quite a bit. I'll let the other two colleagues introduce themselves as well. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Corey DeClusen. I'm our Director of Solutions Consulting. Um, and when Ryan digs into what it is we do at Versado, uh, keep in mind that what I do is really making sure that our clients get maximum value from our platform, and that's accomplished by the customization with regard to the implementation of our SaaS product. And I'm Jordan Yost. I'm the Product Manager and Design Team at Humana for Versado, um, also based in New York. And uh, like Brian, we're down here on a pretty regular basis. Um, so if you ever see that we're in town, feel free to, to grab us, ask questions, grab me, we love talking with each, of, each and every one of you. Uh, but I help out on the day-to-day -day operations side of things. So we are here today to talk about how Prestato optimizes customer engagement. Um, oftentimes when I give these, these talks, you might know, see a lot of people, um, maybe not engaged with me, but they're engaged with what they're doing, right? With their food, with their phone, <laughs> with their laptop, and oftentimes I serve, you know, food, hey, I'm hungry. With my laptop, oh, there's something urgent, I've lost something to do. Um, you know, I'm excited about something I'm doing, with my family is doing. And ultimately, you need to connect and you engage with those emotions, and we're going to show you how Rosado does that by focusing on emotional engagement that can ultimately drive revenue and uh, drive down the costs. So you look at the challenge that, uh, that we focus on. Uh, over the last 10, 15 years, there's been massive investments in understanding your audience. And so you know who the right person is. You know, you've done all those segmentations. You know the right time to reach out to those specific segments. And ultimately, you know, are the channels. And then ultimately, you know the right time. Where we come into play is, what about the message? Just because you show someone a, uh, a plan doesn't mean you have to then just show them at the right time, right? It actually matters what you say to your customers or your potential customers. And we've actually found that the difference in engagement is huge. We see about an average, we can see about a swing of 500% in the lowest, um, you know, anything's put out there to what you might think is the best. Usually, our clients, um, much like Humana, are going to somewhere in between, maybe even slightly above, but that's a huge range of how do you know uh, where you fall in between there and how do you improve it. So that's where we come in. Uh, Rosado provides cognitive content that ultimately inspires action. So what that means, it's that uh, we provide a smart system that combines natural language processing, machine learning technologies, to ultimately machine generate content that optimally engages your audience. And so it inspires them to act almost every single time. As I said, kind of a rehash of some of the things that we're doing. So we're combining technology processes and mathematics to ultimately deliver on this promise. <laughs> now, cognitive computing, cognitive content, um, you know, there's a lot of buzzwords around a lot of things that IBM are talking about. Um, but our good folks at Gartner, where um, I also spent about six years at Gartner, um, I mean, they, they have come out and said, you know, as early as 2018, 20% of all business content will be written by machines. And that was one of their predictions from last year, and they continue to be very bullish on that. Um, in fact, they even 
covered us as a cool vendor um, in uh, data-driven marketing. So really quickly, just about us, we were, um, we were founded in 2012, late 2012, 200 plus uh, employees, you see three of them up here. Um, some nice rounds of funding from some major investors, City American Express, Goldman Sachs, Bain, and also our clients. Uh, you look at some of the accolades that we get, but again, what we're providing is cognitive content platform services to ultimately engage users at a single time. Engagement, the power of emotion. Ultimately, um, you know, there is a wide range of touches that's happening with your clients and potential clients. So just a quick, I mean, this is just a summary, this is the effort, not even close. But ultimately, when you think about Humana and the various business units, um, the channels that you're reaching out to, when you think about the entire customer life cycle um, and the actual campaigns that you're reaching out with, we can potentially impact nearly every single one. Now, when we look at how we do it, we'll walk, into, we'll, we'll walk you through an example of what we did last year, um, specifically with the pharmacy team and um, the email campaign they did to, to automatically refill people's prescriptions. So when you might typically look at this, uh, this email creative, uh, the marketer might say, okay, I need to create a subject line, I need something nice, witty in that headline, and then ultimately a, uh, an engaging CTA. Now that's what a human might do. What Rosado does is ultimately we break that message down into little bitty chunks. That subject line, while you know the, the exclamation point might be minute to you, to our subconscious, it actually can draw some or repel someone from taking an action. So we're breaking that message down bit by bit, kind of outlined in those boxes, just as an example. And what we label them, we call them genes, right? The building blocks of life. So it's the building blocks for engagement. And what we break it down into are things like emotional uh, genes, descriptive, formatting, functional, and positioning. So various things that we're going to test when we put together an experiment and create content. Let me just add one piece of context here, if I may. Um, looking at this, so on a previous slide, Ryan, right, on a previous slide, Ryan had had, there's a difference in potentially 500% between the worst performing message and the best performing message. So ultimately, what we're trying to do is improve engagement, get reaction from your overall audience, from your members, um, and the way it's done is by breaking down these messages within these various um, uh, genes or elements. Um, I just wanna make sure that that's, that that's tied together so you guys understand. When we talk about engagement, we're talking about this kind of structure to help drive that engagement and understand what is gonna be the optimal communication that's gonna drive someone to interact with Humana in a way that is constructive both for you and for them. So once you're able to break content and a message down like that, ultimately engagement then becomes mathematical function, right? So you find out the optimal pieces for each one of those elements, stitch them together, and you have optimal engagement. Now, you might have done A-B testing, multivariate testing around things like you know, formatting, uh, let's say in the subject line, do I use a symbol or do I not? Um, in uh, CTA, you know, kind of color, maybe. Um, but what we, where we really excel and what is hugely different for us is that focus on emotions. So why is that so important? We found about, uh, on average, about 60% of engagement is actually driven by emotional content, emotional messaging. And when we were founded four years ago, and this goes back to um, the company that we spun out of, a marketing automation platform in Europe, um, we had a team of behavioral psychologists who said, okay, we're going to group this in science. So this is the actual, the, the wheel of emotion um, in the psychology field. So what we then are then doing is that we maintain and build the largest uh, marketing language database that's out there. So we tag and score millions of words and phrases and relate them back to the various emotions that you see here, both primary on the outside and then secondary on the inside. Or is there anything else? I know we talked about this specific one last time. Yeah, in fact, one of the, one of the things here, one of the things that's nice to point out, when you talk about breaking down a message with various elements, um, emotion being one of them, we we touch on it so much here because it's such a big driving factor of what gets people to do things. Uh, there's been a ton of reports in the market about this lately. Um, HDR has done a huge write-up on it in a few cases in the last 18 months. Um, but 
when we when we talk about the emotions that get people to to, to do something, um, it can be a very kind of subjective, touchy feely thing. And what we do with the wheel of emotions in the higher level categories here is we help objectify it through the actual experiments that we run in market. So it's not just a oh yeah, they these folks tend to like trust or joy. These folks tend to respond well to fear. It's what is the specific emotion being conveyed? Because if you're trying to get someone to to, to refill a prescription, for example, um, or to change their prescription, for example, you might want to leverage something like, like anxiety um, along with encouragement. Hey, you know, your family really needs you. Maybe you should 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 re-up on your prescription. And that's leveraging a couple of very specific things that will work for a very specific marketing case. And it's objectified through this wheel of emotion. Um, one thing I will point out too, though, um, while we do see upwards of 60% often more, which I think we're gonna get into with one of the results we saw with you guys, um, we're also testing the null values for everything here. So it's not just what is the specific emotion, it's let's also test the lack of emotion just to make sure we get a complete objective view of, um, of what people are or are not responding. Take this a little more quick, walk you through um, just one example of a, of a campaign that we optimized um, with the humanity team. So when I, let's just say I wanted to explain this to my mom. And it just so happens my mom actually is from St. Louis and works for Senti, so very relevant uh, to our folks at Humana. What happens through the process of, of, of running a, a campaign or a project with us, we'll start on the left side. Ultimately, we have your creative input. You put that into our little machine guy there. Now, our database, we also throw in historic metrics and things we've done for, for other organizations over the years to understand what works. And so that really, when people start talking about the automated content generation, is it every, if you have other clients, even our competitors, is everything gonna sound the same? Well, well, no, because we're basing it first off off whatever you're putting in. A landing page, a display ad, an SMS, text message, um, uh, some kind of communication in your in your app, right? some push notifications, something along those lines. Now, we go along the outside, and ultimately what we deliver on first is that we deliver you um, experimental content and then also an experiment structure. Now, we don't, we're not a push out platform, ultimately, we deliver that back to Humana, and it goes out, whether it's IBM, whether it's out to Facebook, whatever. Then you send us back the results. The machine crunches them, generates optimal content. Out the other side comes optimized content, unique emotional statistical insights, increased engagement, reduction in cost, and increased revenue. Now what happens is once we do that loop, over time is that machine learning kicks in, we're building a knowledge about how your customer base reacts, and then you can ultimately just start feeding us, hey, here's a piece of content, a campaign, no need to even experiment. Ultimately, we, we just then start hitting that automation loop and we're spitting out content for it. That is already not. As going into the experimentation phase further. So, typical A-B testing. You create an email, you might change a bunch of things on the other side, you put it in market and say, okay, which one does better? Now, you might not know exactly why, you just know one did better, depending on how much you change. Uh, and then you say, okay, I'm gonna stick with that. When in reality, there could be millions of ways that that message can be set up. Now, realistically, is this, is this possible to test millions of permutations of a message? No. So what we do is our machine identifies those millions, um, takes into account brand guidelines, things we can't say, um, stuff like that. We then come to you with maybe eight to 16 variations of that content that is a representative sample of those millions of potential permutations. So that's where we come in to deliver that experimental content to you. As an example, here's a subject line that we work with on that refill campaign. 16 variations of it. Quick look, some of you might start picking out some patterns, some of you might say, wow, those are completely random. So what happens is, we start kind of color coding certain things, you can see various elements that we're testing. You can either have parentheses or no parentheses. Um, element two is don't wait for reminder, keep it up, alert, so on and so forth. And you can see it's balanced throughout, in, the, in this case, 16 variants. So this is very, when I said experimental structure that we're providing you, what we do is found it has a foundation called um, experimental design. So used oftentimes in um, pharmaceutical drug research, where it's 
taking a, taking a bunch of variants and seeing how they react to something that's held constant. And he would also use um, fancy, fancy mathematics, or orthogonal mathematics, and regression testing to understand which, key, which element is ultimately the winner. I just like showing that because when I show this to a uh, legal team, they might say, well, I only want to do nine, and I want to change this specific word only in this one. Well, we can't, because it then changes the experiments. We provide a rigorous structure that we work with you on, but it's important to follow this. Actually, just to add one other thing here, because, um, go back to the first slide, please, for a moment. Um, this structure is straightforward implementation, right? Uh, what makes it powerful in market is by pulling and testing against a small subset of an overall audience that you're marketing to. We get aggregate results back in these areas with uh, statistical significance. And then from that, we're taking the elements, or I should say the software takes the elements, mathematically generates a brand new message from that learning that's gonna drive the best response on a particular campaign. So then you send us back the results. This is what we read. On the left, you have the subject line experiment that we did. On the right, you see the body. We actually explored 512 permutations of the subject line in one test, 2,048 uh, permutations of the body uh, in one test. What you see in the, in the red is actually how your control performed. We talked about that swing. What you're seeing is the best performing message versus the worst performing message. We show you the lift. We give you some insights. Um, we dive down into a deeper break it down by element. So in this case, the subject line was actually extremely emotional. 91% of the engagement came because the emotional elements in that message. Your body's gonna be a little bit different. Oftentimes you're gonna see a lot of things around the CTA. And especially when you go look at different segments, people are, people engage differently. And sometimes people wouldn't, if people didn't give us their segments, I could tell them immediately either one segment from another. We'll also start, as Corey said, it's not just about the best performing and then going to market with that. We stitch together the best elements of those, of those variants and give them back to you. It's here's what we, the machine believes is your best optimal message. Again, this is an example of both the, uh, the subject line and the, uh, the body. We then look at emotional analysis. What worked and didn't work? Your anxiety, uh, the anxiety phrases that we were using, the encouragement um, phrases that we were using. And then we get really deep into what happened in this, I, I thought this was kind of cool, especially for designers. When you look at, okay, you're the header, right? 45% of the engagement came from that element itself. Incredibly important. You, now you know where to concentrate on. You know where you should tweak if you want to gain or lose uh, potential engagement. What I thought was really cool was this color. It added about 15% of the engagement. And actually that purple, maroonish one out and so being able to know things like that is, is huge. And being able to accomplish it in one test, again, people tell us they've, they've never been able to do that before. And so that we also show, okay, it's not just subtle, there is statistically significant, or it's statistically significant that this color wins out. So if you ever have to defend your work, you can show whoever, like, this is why I did this. Ultimately, if, if there's nothing else you remember, what we drove through this campaign, 68% lift on the CTA clicks. Um, at 350 a click, um, in, this, in this test, uh, or this little experiment with a small population, we had an incremental clicks of about 3,000, so what's that, $9,000. We looked at this out over the course of a year. It was about one, being very conservative, it was about $1.2 million impact to humanity. Crazy. <laughs> um, Dan Degas, part of the Digital Center of Excellence, uh, he had worked with us before and he helped bring us in. And his exact words were, you know, I wouldn't have believed this works until I've seen the results myself. And those are the types of results we see. We look at the open open list just for, just for if we were to tweak the subject line, we can increase open rates by 23% and click through by 50. Pretty crazy. Now, our future vision is not just doing this for an entire population, but being able to do this at the segment level, uh, being able to understand, you know, this segment within MAPD reacts most to this type of emotion, they prefer this, and ultimately what we're doing for some retailers 
um, and uh, financial institutions is getting down to the personal level. So they know lookalikes like Ryan Cox um, react most to excitement or fascination, whereas Corey Jordan might react to something different. So as they go to work, they can target people with personalized emotional content that's going to improve their engagement rates for <coughs> Now, I, uh, I've been talking for a while, and, uh, and Corey has too. I think to, to summarize, so what we do, we're a cognitive content platform and service provider. Why? We drive revenue and cost savings by optimizing communications content to increase engagement. It's really important to note that because a lot of people are like, I don't want to create you know, content marketing, I don't want to create a blog or something like that. If we optimize that, it's not going to show tangible revenue. <clears throat> have a cost associated with us. So we really focus on those high dollar, you know, key adoption, getting people to move from um, <coughs> mail to, um, to digital preferences. That's huge, right? And that's something that we're working on right now with the customer experience. Um, understand what drives customers like never before. Incredibly unique insights that our customers have told us, Gartner, Forrester, those people have told us, you can't get those anywhere else besides Versada. Um, and ultimately, automating optimal content um, you know, you'll do a lot of experiments with us, but once you build a foundation of knowledge, being able to deliver automated, optimized content is the dream. And how through a combination of technologies and processes and uh, mathematics. Now, working together for annual subscription, um, usually your business unit owners um, purchase us in uh, bundled campaigns. Um, and ultimately, if there's ever wanting to learn more, or your main points of contact. Um, my contact information is up there. Um, George Kip, uh, Anthony, I see, I see a number of folks that I work with, but um, maybe up front. Uh, know how to get in touch with us um, if there's ever an interest on, on inviting me. For now, we'll open it up for some Q&A, since uh, I apologize that I didn't really make this interact in the course of the conversation. Um, so there might be some questions, so I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and open it up. So, uh, I work with our IBM platform, campaign platform. So as we, <laughs> as, as we look at what they're talking about in cognitive computing, what I expect to see here next month in uh, Vegas, how do you differentiate your platform and your service compared to the yeah, quote unquote out of the box? Yeah, that's actually a great question. Um, from, a, from a go to market standpoint, I mean, cognitive computing is a marketing thing that's different in private market. We very much align with it in terms of the very how it's done. It falls under a on an AI umbrella, but it's not true AI yet. Um, and the way that we differentiate is we do a different service than what IBM does within that space. Ours is all around the the um, the optimization and also the creation of of content, leveraging the principles of cognitive computing, whereas IBM tackles them in a much broader um, Oh, wait, okay. yeah. 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 Really small population, let's just add out and kind of point something out. If this population had um, a unique form of cancer or a unique um, you know, health issue that they had to manage, like let's say a couple hundred thousand, that would be incredibly difficult for us to work with. Now, once we start getting to the tens, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, um, right, the broader entire Medicare population, that's easy. Um, we do this for retailers um, with their populations in, you know, it can be a matter of hours that we're getting you insights, because that's the that's what the term so it all depends on your population sizes and when we can reach statistical significance through their actions to then prove out here's what actually works. Um, ultimately, right now, George, probably um, anywhere from two weeks to a month maybe to do an experiment, but it really is all about, you know, right. it, let's just say it's ADP and it's, and it's Facebook, it's gonna be quick, probably. So just an example for the pharmacy email, um, that refill reminder goes out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So we selected the Monday distribution. And as you can imagine, 
our volume people are care about this communication. So we're going to get the volume significance that we need. Um, so we sent it on Monday, and we got that data um, by like Wednesday or Thursday. We're able to uh, input that with the subject line. And the next Monday, we did the body test. And then the week after that, we did both. You know, we did the validation of the subject line and the body within three weeks. And so, uh, but other communications, it, it takes a little longer. So they, they worked with uh, uh, Community Vitality, you know, the 365 on some communications that were sent out like once a month. And so they, that one took longer because you did a test that was one month. You had to wait for the next month for the to be um, put it on the And that's the key thing, making sure that they kind of tactically fit in with whatever operational model that you have now is, is one of the most important things that we do. Um, and often it packs the amount of time that a development experiment takes. But, but to Ryan's point, without any operational constraints, um, it, can, it can be done in a matter of hours if it, if it needs to be. So, yeah, so. And so right now, is it purely English, or do we look at other languages? Um, there are probably like 23 or 24 different languages. Yeah. I think you guys have used that number. Um, yeah, so there are, there, are, uh, there are many other languages um, um, that we support. So I, can, I can get you a list, or if you have a question about a certain one, I might even talk about it. I was going to say, I know I've seen Japanese, and I thought that was one of your games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pharmacy, uh, Go 365, uh, agent experience, customer experience, um, uh, the DCOE um, doing some drive to digital stuff, um, uh, doing some guidance center uh, command in your neighborhood uh, work. Um, I'm trying to think of my, I apologize if I'm missing someone in the crowd. Um, but a, a number of, of folks are using us. Last year it was primarily uh, for the concept data support. Right now, we're going to be seeing some of the work that we were doing with, um, again, the adoption stuff. That's going to be the first thing to go live with. Um, we we're hoping to do some direct mail, which is, which is pretty interesting for some folks. Um, a lot of that direct response stuff we're going to be getting into as well. So if your term database has emotional weights for the terms, uh, and you're talking about uh, seasonal changes, are you also uh, doing any work with like cultural or Yeah, um, that's actually handled on a on, on more of a bespoke system based on the 
partners we're working with and their overall audience. But yeah, we, we take that metadata into account over time, which is how we build out one of the last slides that Ryan showed. He talked about the emotional segment of one that we build to over time, leveraging um, that metadata in terms of segments or whatever it might be. Um, and the platform basically accounts for that through the data that we put back about the audience. So on a very simple level, let's just say that it's not that there's a marketing message that goes out, and we you know the segments are men and women, and then we test one again that's only men or women. Over time, we'll build up the, that kind of profile, and it could be regional or whatever, whatever it might be for you. You mentioned you mentioned direct mail. That was giving a question I had. So your example is email. So is that your primary channel now? What other communication channels are you developing? So we started, um, again, we spun out from uh, this deep marketing automation provider in Europe that we focused on uh, SMS. And that's really easy, first off, because you know who that person is. Uh, quick response, short, tweet. Um, we've, we've done uh, a number of direct mail campaigns. We've proved it out. It just looks a long tail. Um, and so we're almost, almost channel agnostic. Uh, I know we're, we're working through some potential of uh, like uh, SEO and things like that. but. For, for direct mail, it's interesting. Um, what we do is say that we can optimize you know, messaging on the envelope. We can optimize message in the body content. Um, ultimately, it just we, we have to look at it over a pretty long period of time, you know, however long the response window is. And we also have to be able to account for a unique tracking code or you know, they, this person received this variant and, and they called it, you know, different things like that that we take into account. Yeah, that's a great question. So basically, what I like to say is get us involved as early as possible so that we can work with you on that on that messaging. Uh, now, you know, some of the messages that we, we're going to give you 16 variants, some that may be pushing the boundaries of that, that brand messaging there. Um, and we ask that you try and work with us on that uh, because it may be something that you've never run before, but it could be a very strong winner in the end. Uh, but Certainly, we you give us like a, a brand guidelines. Yeah, you know, we're gonna take that into account, and we're gonna work with you, your brand team, your legal team. We're gonna work with those people so that we make sure that our messages are not um, completely off off base. Basically, so we we've actually had some conversations with a couple people from the legal team where we walked them through the process and explained things, and we're able to reach an agreement with them on, hey, let's keep this in there, let's take that out. And so it's, it's a bit of a give and take where we just, uh, you know, as partners, we're, just, we're trying to, to build out business for you. And so we're making sure that we're staying in line with you as well. Right, yeah, I mean, I, I just think like even beyond legal, like what the effect of like making, like, you know, identifying brand with guilt or identifying the brand with anxiety, like that sort of thing. So. <laughs>
that are you're, you're created your brand guidelines. You deliver the content here to you. Right about here, it's not going live. It's wor working through your legal team so they can have, and brand say yes or no. You can change it. Now, if we deliver the optimal content, you still might say, I don't know. Right? We can actually then pick from the other choices to say, okay, if you take maybe the second, our second kind of Frankenstein content, it's only going to perform this much. Are you willing, is the business willing to give up this much engagement to fall into what you see as brand benefit? So it really is up to you. We give it, we give it a lot of flexibility because it is your brand, it's your voice. Make it a little better. And just, just one other thing, too. I think that we're kind of touching on two separate things here, too. There's one. Um, looking at your value to be put in the market, right? right. Um, like the man has integrity, passion, so over things like that. That's very much what, what you want to communicate holistically to your members. Now, what there's, there's that side of it, and then what we're doing is we're optimizing to get response from your members on a segment and someday individual on this level. And I think they're two separate different things that we're talking about. What what does the brand mean to you versus how do we get a member to do something that's going to be beneficial for us as a how do you guys, this is like a following question, I promise, from the conversation we're just having. So how do you um, measure the downstream impact of the customer journey of like a really successful email, right? So like you were talking about the Go365, you might lose your points, emails that went out. Like how do, I don't know if it's you guys or somebody else in Humana, like what's interesting to me is how that would tie into later points in the customer journey. Like it was really effective at getting then what? Did we generate a lot of calls because people had anxiety or did we answer their questions and so call was down? Like, how do we measure that stuff? Anybody know? Well, so, so as an example, so we did a, I'll go back to the refill. The one thing that's, and the reason that one was chosen is because it had a one click refill model where they clicked on it and the refill came. So, in essence, that's a, a really nice user experience. You can have the option for that. And so, we were able to measure that, that's an individual who doesn't have to call yeah. into the call center. So the downstream impact is that we can measure that we have less calls that are coming in based on this new communication. Yeah. Now with, um, with the um, campaign selected for the you know, Tally Goes 65, a lot of them were focused on completion of your call system. Yeah. And so they were able to determine downstream that, yeah, more people click through and more people were, were able to complete. And so therefore, yeah, you're getting more people to click, but they're also more, it seems more qualified and so that's one thing that we're, we're currently seeing with them is that, yeah, not only are they getting them to where we want them to be, but they're completing the action. And so it's not, I need to say, we're not just sending junk leads, you know, like, you know, chicken yeah. salary, my God. I mean, yeah, I'll do my thing on that, but. You know, right, yeah. <laughs> not so, yeah. It's not just open, right. it's open data. So and that's why in, in 2016, working with Rosado uh, um, Tequina is trying to select those programs where we can really, um, Isolated, yes, they were the, the member completed the action we wanted them to take, and they, you know, we, we completely um, cycle it out. Um, and so now that we get the proof value, so now it's moving forward is that they've proven that they can do that, and then and we're expanding. Okay, but they did email because even though 16 variations of email is complex, that was one of the easier ones for us to internally test. And so now they're moving on to other things, but you know, hopefully, you know, the right now. The thing that we did for e adoption. Uh, launched last night and we uh, messages in our notification bell on um, secure my Humana, so we'll be sending messages there. Um, but it's really like we've done the breadth within the email and now it's expanding into the different channels. And again, we always want to, you know, they're really good at it. Rosada's always like, they're like, we want to pick campaigns where we can knowingly impact the end point. And so we're always trying to get that data. So for the adoption, it's a little on the back end, you know, like how many, which people could we also work with? Which people receive the message, and which individuals actually change their preference um, to receive info electronically. So you can really say, yeah, they can do this journey. Now, I don't know if you're talking about even past that. I don't know, but I mean, as for those individual communications, except we try to really build on. Yeah, if you, if you wanted to go past that, you need to, you know, that's not a massage job. That's for like consumer analytics or, you know, another analytical organization to do that deep dive to understand. I was going to see what you all think about. You're selling a product that we think we know the, the consumer wants. But have you all done anything to say your product may not be what they want? And I mean, 
product recommendations based on the, your understanding of the market? Yeah, um, I, can, I can take this one. There's, there's, there's no direct path necessarily to say, oh, this just doesn't work at all. One of the things that we do look at, which there are certain, certain leading indicators of this, um, we talk about the different elements that go into um, driving the fact of mobile. Now, on one of the on one of the slides over there earlier, it was a, a bar graph that had all the different 17, the, the 16 in the control, showing that large variation. We call that elasticity in language, uh, meaning that you get different responses based on the different language you used. That means language is working with drugs to drive the overall response. Now, to answer your question specifically, it's like, hey, maybe maybe this isn't the thing we should even be selling. Um, one of the things that we've seen, if there is absolutely no elasticity, very low elasticity, it means that message doesn't matter. What you're communicating to your customer about this, it doesn't matter. And there's nothing we can do to drive a big lift on that kind of thing. So if we notice that in terms of we're, we're likely going to stop working on that campaign. And for our customers, that becomes a leading indicator. Wow, if, if our messages around this product aren't working at all and they don't matter at all, then it, it's, it's an indicator for, for, for something that might be reevaluated on a project type basis. And it tends to fall into two camps. Um, I was kind of interesting. One, you have a product that just sells itself. It doesn't matter what you say about it. But more commonly, maybe you agree on the product. Um, if I heard your question correctly, uh, you know, I think from our side of things, we're not going to come to you and at this point in time and say you should be doing your product should do this or your value proposition should be that. But it's you can bake that in as one of our genes. And we do a lot for financial services from the company, so they want to test it. You know, okay, now I know I didn't have to give 15% or 50,000 miles, I could have gave 20,000 miles and uh, it, it was fine. So we can take into account um, testing that you would be doing anyways. Like, like I said, the colors and things like that, value descriptions uh, or value propositions for an actual product and bake that in. And then we can statistically tell you, like, here's what, here's what we would do, or here's what you should do. And it's not just us, it's, it's what your users are telling you. Yeah, with the thing you were showing earlier, like, that is very good. It can be. Okay. And, and that's the thing, when, and, and Corey and I talked about this last night, is what I want to express is that those are our foundational ones. There's a number of people that it's up to like an eight gene when we do like a standard uh, test, and it can be various things that you want. I, I've done, um, is it good to represent something as pictures versus a bulleted list? Um, you know, changing different positioning, is it better to show a, um, a table um, that's divided two versus one over the other. Um, there's a lot of different things that we can, that we can put in there um, that are unique to a campaign um, or a project. So I think I understand the training data for your machine learning to be build up over time with customers and test and learn. Do you ever factor in the real world results? You know, you mentioned uh, you know, saving a million dollars. Uh, does, does that find its way ultimately back into your training data, or is it, it, is, is it all kind of the command-based stuff from the, the many variations of tests that you run, this test and learn this? Is yours a question of attribution? Basically, do we attribute to the response? Well, train, in, in, to, to train machine learning to get smarter yeah. and, and, and more adept. Oh, absolutely. Uh, does, does any of the real world improvements impact, does that factor in or is it what you're using in the development of that, and what you learn, you know, from, from the different components, emotions, and trust, uh, etc. So. Yeah, there's a question of, of, is it learning from the, the response from my audience acting absolutely and from what we're seeing in the, in the insurance and healthcare space externally? Right? It's a little bit different. You're learning from, as you, we develop, you're, learning from that, yeah. but let's say we got $500,000 bump, not a yeah. million dollar bump for yeah. say customer calls, does that sort of thing ever find its way back in? So it's, it's not the specific dollar amount in that regard. Uh, what it is, it's, it's the actual attribution of success in terms of, of that conversion event or, or whatever that might be. On the, on the top end, when you look at responses being measured through opens and clicks, um, we leverage that data to provide a best performing message in, in terms of an email campaign. Um, over time, we'll, we'll actually get back that data as you have it attributed to the success of someone actually has gone paperless, someone actually did rebuild, and we'll put that back in 
to then further optimize for the future based on the real metric you're going for in terms of that transaction done, which, which does equate to that kind of cost savings, but it's not the specific dollar amount. Does that answer your question? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's what you've learned in the testing factors in, but again, in production, the real click throughs, that kind of data. Thank you.